Deform with stable diffusion allows you to go from this to this. What you're seeing right now is a series of prompts that trigger at certain frames in the animation. Going off of the initial video, which was used as a snapshot for the init, which we'll talk about in a moment, we're able to change and alter the prompts and zoom through prompts based on the frames we set. Before we can start creating, we need some prerequisites and an install. Now, if you already have Stable Diffusion and Deforum installed, you're good to skip to about the halfway point in this video. If not, you're in the right spot. The first thing we need is Python. It'll be link one in the description down below, but if you've done a lot of these AI tutorials, there's a good chance you already have it. You're gonna go to the link, hover over downloads, and click the most recent version. Right now, it's 3.11.3, but that could be further along depending on when you're watching. When you install, you want to make sure that you add the path option at the bottom of your install window. Not doing that or failing to do that will cause everything to break, so ensure that you check that box for path. Next, you're going to navigate to link 2 in the description down below, which is going to take you to this Empire Media Science repository, and this is for the A Quad 1 Web UI Launcher. This is going to be what we use to clone Stable Diffusion to our device and run it on a local page. You're going to see this Assets section, and you're just going to want to click on this Web UI Auto Installer. It's only about 5 megabits, so you should be all good to do that very, very quickly. Go ahead and open your file explorer because we want to ensure that we can actually locate our stable diffusion file and there's one specific file we're going to need to slightly modify or add to. So for me it is in OSC users ASIN and then we're going to go to documents. We're going to go to our web UI auto installer, our stable diffusion web UI, and we're going to want to locate this models folder. We're just going to need to know where exactly it is. And inside models, we have stable diffusion. You'll notice that I have a file named rev animated v122. That's what we're actually going to be using to create our animations. So go ahead and navigate to link three in the description down below, and it'll take you to civitai.com and it take you to this specific model. Now you don't want to just click download, you want to right click download and click save link as. This is going to actually open your file explorer and you're going to want to make sure that you have that stable diffusion file open. Again, you can find that inside of the A Quad One Web UI auto installer inside of stable diffusion web ui we're going to scroll down to models not modules models and then we're going to scroll down again to stable diffusion and this is where you're going to save that file of course i'm not going to do it because it's already here but that may take 10 to 15 minutes to actually download but once it does, you're ready to continue. Now, once you have those two things installed, we need to actually open this. This is the administrator panel for A Quad One Web UI. You can just go ahead and search for A1, and it should actually just pop up A11, that right there. It'll look kind of like this, this icon right here. You're going to go ahead and open that, and it's going to give you these two windows. Now, right off the bat, we want to make sure we click on Auto Update Web UI and Auto Update Extension. This will ensure that it just keeps running and auto updating, and we don't have to do any of this stuff you see happening in the background manually. Next, there is the launch options. We want to go ahead and click on enable Xformers as that's just going to be a general speed up when generating uh, our images or our videos rather. And then this right here is basically up to interpretation. If you have a graphics card with a VRAM under 8 gigabits or 8 gigabytes, you're going to want to click on low VRAM. If you do not, you can go ahead and just leave that open. Once you've done that, we're going to go ahead and click on launch web 
UI. Now this will actually run over here. It may take a few minutes if this is your first time actually running this. And if you have any error that says Python is not a command in the system, that means you need to reinstall Python and make sure you click the add to path button on the install window. This is where it will all break if you did not add Python to path. So we're gonna let this run and we'll show you the local host. Once that has completed, this window will automatically pop up. Now, if it doesn't, we can manually load this window as well. We're just gonna need to go into our file explorer once again, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to find this. We're gonna go into our file explorer. For me, it's in users, ASIN, and then we're gonna go down to documents. A quad one stable diffusion web UI and then we're gonna scroll all the way down till we see web UI dash user we're gonna go ahead and open that batch file right here and once this runs it'll actually let us know what host we can copy and then paste so you can see here it is launching a web UI for us and we'll just let that load for a second. Once that loads, it's going to spit out a local URL. We can either just control click to open that or of course copy that and paste it into our favorite browser. This right here is just a manual and alternate way to get to this very window right here. There's a few things that we wanna actually change inside of this window here. First off, we wanna change sampling steps. We're gonna put this to 25. Now, if you're familiar with Midjourney, you can think of this as as the dash dash s or your stylized where you can go between zero and a thousand sampling steps is essentially the same thing how stylized do you want uh, this rev animated diffusion checkpoint to actually be now you'll notice there's something called sampling method on the top left now we want to go ahead and change this to dpm plus plus sde chorus and we'll go ahead and set that here. Now width and height, this is going to be your resolution. Currently I have it set to 720 by 1280, but you can definitely scale that way up. Now we need to go ahead and actually grab the Deforum extension. This is gonna be what makes all those cool animations inside of Stable Diffusion. So on the top, we're gonna go to extensions, and then we're gonna go in this sub window to available. If you don't see this long list here, go ahead and just click load from on what you're already on, and this list will pop up. Now inside of here, we're gonna control F, and we're just gonna type in Deforum, and it should take you down here to the official port of Deforum, an extensive script for 2D and 3D animations. And on the right, just go ahead and click on install. This will begin the install of Deforum, and once that's done, we'll be right back. Once that install is complete, you're gonna go back to the Installed tab and click on Apply and Restart UI. As you can see, it says Unknown under this, and we want the Deforum tab up between Settings and Train. So go ahead and click Apply and Restart UI. Once that's complete, you'll notice that we have a new tab at the top. This tab will be called Deforum. Go ahead and click on Deforum, and there's a few parameters we need to set. A few that will be up to your interpretation, but a couple that are practically necessary. We're gonna go ahead and go first to the run. You wanna make sure that your sampler is on the DPM, SDE, Chorus. You wanna make sure that your steps are to your liking, what you would like it to stylize, as well as the width and height. We can leave things like batch name and seed alone. Once you've set that, we're gonna go to the next tab, which is keyframes. Go ahead and set your animation mode to 3D and your border to wrap. Now, for for this, I'm going to be using 600 frames for my max frames. You can go ahead and set this however you would like, but using anything below 600 may change this down below, which is our strength and motion. Now this is a starting point, and this is actually the point that I used for the video you saw in the intro, so feel free to pause the video right here and go ahead and copy down these sections. Once you've completed that, we're going to go ahead and go over to Depth Warping and FOV. This is a really quick change. We're going to just make sure that Use Depth Warping is checked. We have Bicubic, Border, and Midas 3 Hybrid for the algorithm. And then we're going to go down to FOV Schedule, and that'll generically be 70. We're going to go ahead and change that to 120. 
Okay, great. Now let's go over to the noise tab. And this is a formula that a TikTok creator came up with that I have absolutely no idea how it works, but this is the heavily tested uh, formula that you should add for your noise schedule. Now make sure you leave everything else the same, but just add this noise schedule algorithm or formula rather. Now we can go ahead and set our init, and that will be in the init tab between prompts and control net. Go ahead and make sure that use init is checked, and you can set the strength to whatever. The default of 0.8 is just fine. You'll notice that init image is actually a file on my ASIN device, and that is because we want to select the image that we want to actually come through. So I'm using something called PowerDirector, so you'll go ahead and load whatever you want into PowerDirector, uh, Adobe Premiere, whatever editing software you use, you're going to scroll to the actual clip or the image there you want it to start at, and we'll go ahead and click the take a snapshot. Now go ahead and save that snapshot, and then go ahead and open it inside of your file explorer. In this case, it was just in my downloads file. We're going to right click the image and click copy as path. Once we copy that image as a path, we can go Go ahead and go back and paste it into our init image section. Once we have our init set to our beginning image, we're going to go back to the prompts section. This is where we're going to set exactly what prompt we want it to listen to during what frame. You can go ahead and set this to whatever you want. Just ensure that you have this format for each frame, followed by a comma at the end of each prompt if you're having another frame play. So with this, you can control exactly when the video changes, how it changes, and what happens during the change. Now, once you've clicked generate, it may take an hour or two to actually generate. Mine took about an hour and a half. And right above this generate button will be a view generation. You go ahead and click on that, and we can see our generation has loaded as you saw in the beginning of the video. It is really trippy, it is really cool, and it is really free. The only thing it's not is really fast. Now, there's one other option in here. If you have the VRAM, that means if you have, say, a 16 gig or higher of VRAM, you can go to your output and you can actually choose to upscale your model. Now, there are a few other models that you can mess with and an upscale factor that can go all the way to times four. You can, of course, upscale your video after downloading it in, say, upscale.media. That's an AI upscaler for free. Or you can, of course, turn it into a GIF. But either way, you can upscale it through your output. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions about Stable Diffusion or Deforum, let me know in the comments below. I will try and stay active as much as possible in that to help all you guys out. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video as that truly helps this get pushed out to other viewers like you who are looking for some free, informative, all-inclusive tutorials. If you really want to harness AI and learn more about its potential, there's two separate tutorials on your screen now that will accomplish just that. Runway ML is another wonderful text to video generator, and the full Mid Journey Master Course will help you find parameters that will supercharge your image generation.